new toy. All right, this is for when I want to draw and I draw all the time for patients and I think it's a really valuable tool to teach people things. And I thought, well, I'll do it and I'll just, oops. My first thought was that, hang on. So my first thought was that we would do it by, I would switch this where you could see, sorry, I'm trying to figure this out. So where I could just draw on this whiteboard, but it's real like reflecty when I tried to do that. So that didn't really work. And then I thought, okay, well, I'll try it where I can use my laptop and I'll draw over here, but it's pretty far away and the laptop doesn't have like enough, um, it's not good enough quality, so you couldn't really see it. So thanks to my husband's help, we have managed to have another option. All right, this is my iPad and it, it is set to have automatic time setting on it. Um, and even though it's set like that, it still says it's 941 and it's supposed to be in Auckland time and it is definitely 340 in the afternoon, but I don't know. Anyway, so now we can together either like this, or if we still want me to be able to be on it, we can go like this and I can draw you pictures. What should I draw a picture of? I am an artist. Don't forget. Thank you, Kyberg, for the raid. Uh, uh, guys, come on. I'm not going to draw a dragon or a cat. you got to give me something in my field. <laughs> well, look at, let's talk. There's a story today where we're talking about uterine didelphus. And if we get to that, we'll talk about it. But uterine didelphus is basically where the uterus is duplicated. So when you are an embryo and your organs are forming, the uterus forms in two separate sides and they come together like this and then they connect and the inside becomes open. So they grow together like that. In the process of that, at any point, that process can be interrupted and essentially go wrong. So that's where you get things like a uterine septum or a bicornuate or heart-shaped uterus. And I mean, a bicornuate uterus or an arcuate or heart-shaped uterus. Um, you can get didelphus, which I'm going to draw a picture of, all kinds of different configurations of the reproductive anatomy. These are called Mullerian abnormalities. So Mullerian is M. Okay, so that's because it's the Mullerian duct that forms um, those organs. So if anything goes wrong in the process of that, you can get different formulations of how the uterus looks. So in regards to a didelphus, that would be where there's essentially, it didn't grow together at all, and they can come on a spectrum, but these people often have, so the vagina up until the top two thirds is like the top two thirds are from the Mullerian system and the bottom is not. So the vagina can have a septum in it as well. It doesn't always. And then in some of these patients, they'll have two services that go into basically two separate uteruses. So they have two uteruses, two services, However, it can often be really hard to see one side because most of the time as you become sexually active, one side becomes the dominant side where people have intercourse. And so you could go your whole life with this and not really know if you didn't have any reason to get imaging done. Um, I've had people who had it diagnosed in labor because something just didn't seem right. And you don't, so you don't always have like a, a, visible opening on this side it's there it's just it can look very much like it's adjacent to the uterus and you don't always see it both sides can be fully functional i guess we'll talk about the first news story before we get to the midwife stuff because it's relevant to what we're talking about so but the fallopian tubes are normal and then the ovaries form from a different set of structures um as well so interestingly embryologically your reproductive system the mullerian system it develops at the same time like on the same like time frame at, at gestational development as the mullerian system and so it's really common to have an overlap of people who have something like this and also have a renal or a kidney abnormality so it's common for them to have like a horseshoe kidney which is where instead of having 
a, two kidneys like this, one on either side, they will end up with, if you have your aorta running this way, they'll have one kidney that's kind of shaped like this because the kidneys never fully split. So it's the opposite, right? The uterus grows together and then the inside goes away and it becomes one. The kidneys grow apart and it can happen that they are more likely to have an abnormality in their kidney. So anytime we diagnose a Mullerian abnormality, we usually have them get a renal ultrasound as well. Um, and the inner ear also develops at the same time as the Mullerian system and the kidneys, like embryologically. So it is also more common for them to have hearing deficits than other people. Yeah, you can have a horseshoe kidney and not have a uterus. You can have a horseshoe kidney and have a normal uterus. You can have a didelphus on your uterus and your kidneys can be fine. It's just they're more common than the general population. Yeah, oh, and hearing issues. Okay, that's interesting. And that would likely be because that is the same time frame in embryologic development where those things are happening, where they're growing that. So if there's some kind of environmental impact, and we don't always know what that is, whether it's physical or chemical or just a happenstance, it's more common for these things to go together. Looks like chicken nuggets on a stick. <laughs> Can you see it on a fetus? Um, we don't usually diagnose a didelphus or anything like that by ultrasound, it's really hard because uh, fetuses and then newborns have very tiny reproductive tract. So the uterus is incredibly small and it's also not impactful, but we will commonly see someone who has one kidney or something like that. And a horseshoe kidney is common to see on ultrasound as well. Looks like there's an ad break starting in about three minutes. Um, so we'll just keep talking about this until then, and then we'll try to get into the bulk of what we're going over today. Is an imperfect hymen a Mullerian anomaly? No. Imperfect hymen is a variation of normal. So I need to get more used to how we use this app, but this is fun just kind of playing with it and getting to use it today. So goodbye uterine didelphus. So we'll talk about real quick, um, So hymens can come in many forms. And actually, rather than drawing, this one's probably a good one for me to just show you. Um, and we'll talk about bicornuate uterus as well. Didelphus, and she was told she couldn't have children. Uh, you can have, you can be pregnant with a didelphus. It is more common to have pregnancy complications for sure. I recall MDG mentioning how when one fallopian tube is lost, the remaining one can often catch over from the other side. I imagine it would be way easier to make the already connected tube to grab from both ovaries. Um, not sure what you're asking. I imagine it would be way easier to make the already connected tube to be able to grab from both ovaries. It is more common that the one on the same side is the one where the ova oocyte enters, but that's not always how it works. Okay, so hymens. Uh, yeah, so um, let me see if I can open this in my drawing app. I don't know what other photos are on this. Hopefully not anything that shouldn't be seen by the internet, I guess. <laughs> this is my old iPad I don't use anymore, but I think it's pulling in all my photos. So hymen types. Um, more common... For people to have uh, as a child usually will be come on I don't know how to use this yet. something kind of like this probably is most common um, septate just means the opening there has a little septum in the middle and these are all variations of normal and perforate is a problem sometimes well yeah, depending on how long it's imperfect. And cribriform can be problematic as well. And then you can see this one is disrupted here. So it used to be connected like that. It was like an annular. And 
that disruption can happen from intercourse, gymnastics, riding horses, whatever it is that you're doing can cause that. Um, bottom left is a cursed picture. <laughs> um, yeah, sorry, links. You have to whisper a link to um, a mod. If there's any mods here, you can whisper a link to them and they can get it to me. But Or you can just go to my most recent YouTube community post and put it there. Okay, so why is imperfect hymen sometimes a problem? Sometimes if the hymen remains completely imperfect until the time that somebody is uh, having menstrual cycles, when you have menses, the blood can't go anywhere. So the way that these people present is they have never started their period, but they have cyclic pain each month that gets worse and worse. And then when you do an exam, you can see kind of a bulge here and it typically looks bluish in color. And it's because old blood from when they actually have started menstruating, they just don't know because there's an imperfect hymen builds up behind the hymen. Um, it can just cause a lot of pain. It won't build up until it bursts. They'll come in because of pain most of the time. So yeah, that's that. Someone had asked, I don't know how to get this photo off now. Let's see if I can learn how to do this. <laughs> I'm hopeless. We'll just, you know, do what we do best. Just start a new one. <laughs> All right, the last thing I will draw is uh, you asked for different kinds of uterus anomalies, and I'll show you another one. So I mentioned these can come in spectrums. So you could have someone who has this. Okay, that is a uterine septum. So the inside part of the uterus where the endometrium is, where an embryo would implant, is kind of heart-shaped. But the outside of the uterus, you can see here, has a normal contour. So that's called a septum. All right, so then you can have what we were talking about earlier, where the uterus is heart-shaped. This is called arcuate. And this is a variation of normal, essentially. So that is different from a septum because this doesn't go quite as far. They are kind of on the same spectrum, I guess, but it's not the same. And also the contours on the outside here are different. Okay, so that's called arcuate. Then you can also have bicornuate. And this is where it's essentially two sides, but they grew together some. So the easiest way to think about this is that if you think about what we were just talking about with didelphus, where it's two completely separate uterus, uteri, uteri, um, is that this one partially grew together. So the difference between septum is that this on the outside is two. And the difference between arcuate is that it's much more pronounced. It's more significant and it, it can cause more problems in pregnancy, although you can still have a very normal pregnancy with a, a bicornuate uterus. Sometimes these will become what we call a unicornuate uterus. And people always like this because uh, they like to call it a unicorn uterus, which I find cute. Um, and it will often have a normal contour here, normal contour here, but on this side, if you went in surgically, you wouldn't see a fallopian tube. There would be a tube here. And sometimes you'll see a horn that doesn't function on that side. It can sometimes also be a functioning horn, but just underdeveloped. And the tube would be connected here. So they can kind of do whatever they want. It's really interesting. And I find this to be one of the most interesting topics. Um, 
Well, actually, you guys know I love all of the. I think all topics in my field are super interesting. But yeah, that one is called Unicorn Whip. All right, so that's just a you know surface level discussion, and I hope that you learned something. Oh, <laughs> hello. How about back to the camera? There we go. Let's just go back through a few of these, see if I missed any, um, any questions or anything that we wanted to go over. My first OB told me how to buy cornea uterus based on imaging, and that diagnosis is incorrect. I hadn't exploratorily um it can be hard to diagnose on imaging not always but it's not always accurate uh but yes uh laparoscopy or looking at, into the pelvis would be probably more accurate but you also have to think about this so look at let me pull it back up one more time so Sorry. If you think about it, if you looked in the pelvis from the top, like you went in surgically into the abdomen through the belly button and you looked down into the uterus, there, like, this one would look normal. This one often will look normal visually if you're just looking at it. It's not always as pronounced as it looks there. Sometimes this one can look normal. So there are variants of these that, because they mainly affect the inside of the uterus, they might not actually be clearly abnormal on laparoscopy. Most of the time we can see it, but it's, yeah, sometimes you can't. All right, that was fun testing out our new toy.